Hello there. Hello. And um, welcome to another vlog. We're not going to do a tour today. We're, we're just going to have a little talk about um, the plots and the growing season. We've got a lot to do, haven't we? Rich? Yeah. How's your growing season been going? We have got a lot to do. <laughs> I was waiting for that. And um, so, yeah, in a couple of days time, there's going to be a storm. Storm oh, Agnes is coming is it through. Agnes? It's Agnes. It's first day for September. Well, no, it's the first what? storm of the autumn season, the autumn, autumn winter it's season. The autumn equinox. So it starts with the A. Yeah. They're all letters of yeah. the alphabet. So for the autumn. Storm yeah. Agnes is coming through with 80 mile an hour winds. Now we don't want 80 mile an hour winds now, because you... we've had a, a bit of wind, haven't we, over the last few days? Just a bit of wind. I've had a lot of wind. <laughs> Must be all that spinach. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> it's not going to be 80 miles an hour out there inland, is it? And that's it on the be. coast. Well, we're near the coast, yeah. Yeah, we are, but but it'll be more like 60, 50, 60 miles. Yeah. Yeah. I um, want to show you about a 60 mile an hour wind. Oh, yeah. These are, that's really uprooted, hasn't it? Sunflowers. <sighs> I'm going to have to this dig that This is a back sunflower. In which has been knocked over and mm. all over the plot we've got sunflowers yeah we've planted loads of sunflowers this year that needs rooting in again phil that needs rooting in again yeah i'll do that we'll just put our foot on that for the time being so 60 mile an hour winds and that's what happens isn't it yeah i mean they're, they're, yeah but the sunflowers are really tall so they can whip up even with like 40 miles an hour they're shallow rooted aren't yeah, they yeah they're shallow rooted so they do go over. Some flowers have done over really there, well this year. They're, they're all right. They haven't come up and yeah. just rooted one in again over there. So they'll yeah. be fine. So, um, yeah, that's, ju that's just in a small wind. What's a small wind as opposed to a big wind? Well, an 80 mile an hour wind is a big wind. What's a small wind then? Uh, <laughs> 50 or 60. Not 20. A 20 is a breeze. <laughs> it's not really a wind, is it? A bit of a breeze. So, yeah, sunflowers have done really well this year. Mm. We planted them for Ukraine, didn't we? We did, and um, we planted them all over the plot. I'll, I'll show you some of them in the photos that we do. Um, um, what do you reckon done thing, well this I year? Think, I think it was done exceptionally well has been the um, uh, runner beans. Oh God, they haven't stopped. And we got to a point where we have to stop, mm. stop harvesting them. Yeah, I've gained quite a few away as well. Yeah, yeah. so we, we stopped harvesting the, the runner beans about a month ago and just let them go to seed pods, yeah. just become pods, seeds. Which, and can... which you started... Um, I did some today, yeah. You started... Early a lot. Um, Depodding. Depodding. So what, what we're going to do is, it's a great way of... of uh, it's a great tip for if you're growing runner beans and you've got a, a glut of them just to stop picking them and just let them dry off let them mature into okay. seeds into into the let big the pods seeds go papery though papery a little bit harder and, and then uh, get the pods out and dry them dry them and then you can put them in jars and you can use them in soups and stews mm. through throughout the year you don't even have to dry them you, you can actually freeze them in the freezer and, and uh, cook them up from there if you like um, but that's a good tip you know mm. if you've got a gloss of of that type of thing and See, we're growing runner beans they're still and flowering as well yeah the they're still stuff. flowering they're tender and, and true the bees are still loving them yeah mm. and so um yeah that's that's been a really good crop this year hasn't mm. it the runner beans. We've, had, we've had various varieties we've got these that are tender and true that been absolutely prolific mm. we've got um scarless emperor yeah that have also been getting some nice uh crops off and we've got the gigantica as well yeah which are the broad beans really aren't they the big gigantica is the white butter beans they're huge they're no another name Not for butter big. beans the white beans yeah uh but the the, there's some great recipes mm. uh, for for butter beans that we've mm. we've used in the past uh, for butter bean stew and stuff mm. like that. It's really it's a really nice uh, bean to no, it's use nice. In yeah, it's very creamy. Winter tasty. stews, yeah. So we're, the butter beans have done great. The runner beans, the purple emperor, 
Um, the um, the, the roller beans or the sweet corn. Tender and true filter. Oh yeah, the the sweet corn have done fantastic. They have. Yeah, but we only we only managed about six cobs off them. And they were absolutely delicious, weren't they? Yeah. They were golden fleece. What happened to them, Kath? Oh, what happened to them, indeed? They well, got. We had a, and we had a menagerie of uh, attacks on them, didn't we? We had some parakeets, and we mm. had maybe a couple of rats on them, and a couple of mice, maybe. But they, they were got attacked eaten. from everywhere, weren't they? And they got we, we even yeah. covered them up, and the rats got under the cover and, and yeah. ate them. And they were eating them. They at virtually every cob, so we had to just. No, we got a, we got about six to eight cobs. Yeah, no, out of about thirty. We had over thirty. Over thirty, about thirty-two. So, so yeah. we only got. We got small amounts of, of, yeah. of the crop. Probably about. Which well, was a bit disheartening, wasn't it? Fifth of the crop. It's not good, is it? No. No. It's and you know we've never had any problems with sweet corn in the past. No, we haven't. But the last two years we have. Only the last two years, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Have your sweet corns done? Tell us in the comments. Can we talk about tomatillas now? Yeah, cool. Yes, come on. <laughs> talk about, yeah, let's talk about tomatillos, folks. Tomatillos, we've got a nice crop. We've got we've still got loads on there. Uh, purple tomatillos, and they're lovely for making salsa. Mm. And uh, I've just husked some earlier De -husk today. Dehusked them. Dehusk. Them. Yeah. De they make a lovely salsa verde. If you yeah. if you um, you um, basically. Uh, uh, cook them up and um, uh, with chili peppers mm. and mm. Um, what else do we normally put in? You, you uh, put it in the blender, don't you? Yeah. You blend it. There's a nice recipe we use. Actually, we should put it's a, a link. Traditional one. Yeah. You actually roast roast the. Um, yeah. Well, you, they're called Mexican um, Mexican husk tomatoes. They mm. originate from. Mexico and also Colombia and yeah. all around that region. Yeah. But um, never grow one plant though, not even two. You need to grow a lot of plants they won't together because they won't fertilise now. But uh, you can get the green variety and the purple greenish variety. Mm. Um, but because there hasn't been a huge amount of sunshine, our purple ones haven't gone over to purple. They've stayed Green. greenish, mm. but they'll still be nice. Mm. And if you, you can eat them raw, so you can put them in salads like you would tomatoes. Mm. They're like a citrusy, tarty flavour, but they've got a nice distinctive flavour about them. Mm. They only actually turn sweeter when you roast them. Yes. So if you put them as a side dish in the, the oven, roasted, mm. they turn beautifully sweet, if that's how you want they them. They do, you roast them and mm. then, then you... Um, but if you boil them, they don't, they retain the tarty and the citrus mm. flavour. That's traditionally how they do it in yeah. Mexico, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You have it with tortillo chips and stuff they like make that. A really lovely, nice. You can make so many varieties of salsa now. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Um, so. And we've got so many, we're going to be doing tons of it. They're lovely, they are. Mm. Um, an another job we're doing, um, well, it's autumn time, so we're starting to do jobs now mm. on the plot. But I think going back to the crops this year, the, the, the potatoes have done well as well. Potatoes, yeah. They've done very well. Scottish potatoes we brought back in February from Banff. Yeah. Uh, they've done very well. We've still got a couple of rows to get up with them. Got two rows we? there still to, to lift. And we'll yeah. be doing a potato reveal about our... Um, oh, the Irish lumpers. Irish lumpers Yeah, we've used some of them, yeah. We've got yeah. them in a the tub. But we've got, um, we've got Scottish potatoes in here. Yeah. Um, you can leave them in the ground, by the way, for a while. In mm. fact, uh, the the old uh, Irish way of doing potatoes is to harvest them, but leave a few in the ground mm. and mm. overwinter them. Yeah. Because if you bury them quite deep in the ground, um, you they don't get frost, and so you don't have to um, plant them in the spring. You can mm. overwinter them, mm. and the crops can start growing earlier. Now, and even if the frosts come and they start coming up, yeah. only the foliage will die back, but the mm. the um, roots will will still yeah. still be there. And that's the old mm. Irish way of doing, doing it. And it works. Potatoes overwinter them. Yeah, it well, does work. We didn't do so well for outdoor tomatoes this year because they got flight, but we've done well yeah. in the greenhouse for tomatoes. We've had a mixed mixed thing bag about on potatoes. Them, we've got, we're, we're cropping lots from the greenhouse. The greenhouse didn't get blight. No, not at all. No. It's surprising, wasn't it? It's very surprising. And the ones in the home garden. Yeah, they they a bit of blight, bit but of not blight, much. But some of them we we've been still cropping them. We now. did get a crop of tomatoes, yeah. which was surprising, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? 
definitely. We didn't um, think we would. Elephante leeks are coming up nicely there. They are coming up nice. Um, mm. And we've got lots of uh, spinach, rainbow chard, yep. uh, perpetual spinach. Um, we've got bulb fennel. There and that's cropping well. at this time of year. And we're cropping that now. Yeah. At this time of year. Tasted that spinach last night with a meal and it was absolutely delicious, wasn't it? It was actually. Mm, very nice. Yeah. So anyway, going back to the jobs. No, I still want to go on about the crops, but carry on. Yeah, no. Oh, Purple Queen did well. The long French, uh, sorry, the dwarf French runner beans did very well this year. Got nice crops from them. Right, Carol, September is a busy time because you, you think it's all slowing down in September, but it's actually not. And you know what? Get this get this all the time. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. You, have you to talk live to camera, you should be working. Listen, mate. <laughs> Uh, it's a busy time, and you've got to um, you've got to have your wits about you. Unbelievable! <laughs> Come on, we have to wind this up. So the yeah, it's it's the it's it's a time of uh, uh, preparation as and getting jobs done. So I know you're busy harvesting at this time, but also but planning, also planning yeah. for uh, the winter season and um, getting some crops in, overwintering crops. Like you can overwinter onions, you can get onion crops in, mm. you can get um, cabbages and cauliflowers. Uh, you can sow them indoors now and uh, put them out mm. in a greenhouse over winter, which we're gonna, we're planning on doing and even the, putting them in the raised bed. Mm. Getting the raised bed sorted. Now uh, the uh, Vajega raised bed, um, That's sorted already, isn't it? We've topped we, it up we, as well. We cleared it the other day. Mm. We started clearing it and we got four bags of uh, compost yeah. reduced. Yeah, peat free. Because you can get it reduced at this time of year from the supermarkets. All peat free. All peat free. And so you can get reduced bags of uh, compost to top up your raised beds mm. uh, in preparation for the winter season or mm. next year even. Mm. Um, one of the jobs I'm really going to get be getting on with in the next few days is uh, refelting the shed here on the plot. I've done it at home and uh, I've got some felt in there, some really good quality felt that I'm going to put on that should uh, keep it going for a few years. Is that happening today? I don't know whether it's happening today. I've got other things to do. Well, well, I might start it today and you never know. You I never might know. video it. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, well, though, onions as well, like you've just been talking about overwintering onions. Summer onions did good this year. Mm. They did nice. Uh, we had some Japanese onions, didn't we? Had stir on. We had um, some pickling onions, and we had, we had a nice batch. Yeah. And nice uh, red baron. Yeah. As well. And Very uh, autumnal. Yeah. It, yeah, it's the time to get out and about and enjoy the season. It's one of the best seasons. Mm. I, I think, think it's the most colourful. September really. yeah. and October are just absolutely gorgeous. The transition of colours in the trees are absolutely mm. beautiful. Yeah. It's a great time to mm. um, to enjoy the countryside and yes. to enjoy the allotment. And in a way, it's the beginning of a new year really for growing, isn't it? Like you were say, saying that in the car. Because after the equinox on Saturday, on the 23rd, it, it feels like this is the start of a new year for growing now. Yeah. So it's coming to the end of all the harvests, yeah. almost. Not all of them quite, because we've still got quite a lot to mm. harvest as well. But it's the planning and the beginning again, isn't it? It always goes full circle it's anyway. It's like a psychological yeah. change, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It takes place every yeah. year. But it does feel like a new year. And you feel it in the yeah. spring and you feel it in the in autumn. The, in the growing calendar. The spring and the autumn. Mm. Are the, the most interesting of months i think so the start of the new year rather than looking at winter and january i think it's now yeah. basically and then that leads into next year doesn't it that's it hmm. so yeah um well we Anything hope to add no i don't think so because it was just going to be a short thing today wasn't it yeah do you want to tell a joke uh why did the woodpecker peck on the trunk? I don't know. Because he wanted to make a noise? That's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> From the 1960s, you see. No, 70s, child, Mason. He's 1960s. <laughs> no, 70s. He <laughs> tells lies. I was born in the 1960s. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um thank what you. <laughs> thank you for the um watching this video. Uh, I hope you you've uh, enjoyed it. If you have, then give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a like. Click the bell for notifications for new videos. Leave a comment. 
share it on your social media feed mm. build up the channel for us mm. tell us what you want us to do within reason <laughs> no don't tell us anything <laughs> tell us how you're doing how yeah they can actually they can tell us i'll what be they'd like to i'll see. be most interested in from where you are watching from and what you your um what you're doing what kind of things you're growing and see if they want uh, see if they want interested in that a specific thing or grow you know like a growing challenge you know like we had with the um it's like the russell brand show no we I don't, don't want think so. we don't want to not show quite. them anything Kath, a specific thing <laughs> what's that not quite what did we grow last year that was so prolific a, a cotcha a cotcha yeah and we got them from rhs wisley we did we got them from wisley and that was a real challenge to grow we still got some seeds they were prolific weren't they? i'll tell you what we tried okra this year oh yeah we've tried okra. and we've the only one that's really done well is the one in the porch where it mm. gets to like 90 and 100 degrees we did put them in the greenhouse but they didn't they haven't done anything and what happened with the melons phil they haven't done anything yeah greenhouse melons yeah they haven't the, the chilies doing okay uh we've got what's the name's growing pumpkins and they've done nothing no no Mm. Well, we've got pumpkins here. Yeah, look, look how small it is. Well, what have we got over here? In a squash. A squash. squash. Yeah, onto squash. They're doing all right. But the pump pumpkins are, um, yeah. <laughs> I think you need to change your plan. You need to up your game. So do you. <laughs> to start, start. Uh, you need to build up your bootstraps. Start working. Not leaving it all up to me. I'm like a Victorian servant. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I never stop. I tell you I what, fall asleep on the stairs when I, I go to what, bed. If I did have a servant, it wouldn't be you. <laughs> I go to bed, I can't <laughs> fall asleep you. on the stairs. That's what we used to. That's what we still do now. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next vlog, if you're lucky. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Shall I strangle you now or later? <laughs> <laughs>